Hi guys and welcome back to my channel so if you notice the change in location I'm actually at my mom's apartment so I had a short-term lease agreement type thing with the guy that I was subleasing my old apartment from and basically I'm just gonna be staying here for the rest of August at my mom's apartment until I move to LA so yes that is why there is a change in scenery it's also technically why I got these donuts today because Seattle is really like healthy food, kind of like fancier food, and so I'm finally in the south of Seattle where I can have access to some crazy donuts. So I went to Legendary Donuts and just picked out a bunch of different donuts that I wanted to try, and I'm super excited to try them because they look amazing. I try to look on their website for like descriptions of their donuts, but some of these aren't on their website menu, so I'm just gonna try to guess and try to remember as I go what I ordered. Um, and then for today's video, I'm also finally doing another conspiracy theory. I know you guys have wanted to see a conspiracy theory for a while and I just was like really on the true crime wave, but we're back to conspiracies and I have a crazy one today, like a really crazy one. It's probably the craziest one. Actually, it's for sure the craziest one that I've talked about. If it's all true, it's just like our world is so I'm gonna eat my donut first and then I'm gonna get into talking about it. So anyways, if I remember correctly, this is a peanut butter chocolate chip one. It's heavy, so I think it's filled. And then it looks like there's peanut butter cream on top. Yeah, I'm just gonna take a bite. Okay, so I haven't gotten to the filling part yet. Or, actually maybe it's not filled. It has a hole in the bottom. I couldn't tell from the top. Cause it's like that. But I think it's not filled, but it's really good. The top is definitely peanut butter cream. And then it's also chocolate ice. Mmm. So good. I haven't eaten, it's literally like seven o'clock right now and I have not eaten all day because I had to do some extra research for this video and so I'm just freaking hungry right now. Mmm. I just got a really big bite of peanut butter cream on that one and it's a little bit thicker. It reminds me of like a cream cheese type frosting. Mm. <laughs> they have some donut on my face. <laughs> so I technically haven't messed up my lipstick yet but I did mess up my makeup so we're already off to a bad start. Anyways, the reason why I even came across this conspiracy theory in the first place was because I was going to do a video researching Area 51 and the conspiracy surrounding that. Uh, just because, <laughs> if you guys have heard, basically there was a Facebook joke that started and now hundreds of thousands of people have pledged to storm Area 51 in September. So there's like some big hubbub going on about Area 51. So I figured I would do a video on it. Then I was I was listening to this podcast called The Conspiracy Guys and they were talking about Area 51. So I was listening to it because I wanted to learn more about Area 51. And they were talking about it and then they started talking about this guy, Stephen Green. He's basically, Stephen Green is like the champion of the conspiracy theory that I'm going to talk about today. And so the podcast I was listening to was talking about Stephen Green. They thought that he had substantial proof behind what he was saying. It automatically piqued my interest because I was like, who is this Stephen Green guy? What are they even talking about? And so then I googled it 
and boy oh boy was I introduced to some freaking crazy <laughs> some crazy shit. so that's actually how I came across it because as you can imagine there's not a lot of people talking about this because people are scared to talk about it Stephen Green has apparently had hundreds of witnesses who refuse to actually go on the record because they're so scared of losing their lives or their family losing their lives because of how secret this operation is. So, so Stephen Green's theory is that the United States government, not it was like the high elected officials you would think of, like not the president, um, but other high elected officials and just very powerful people in the United States know about alien technology, know that aliens exist, but they are purposely hiding this from the American public for several really f***ed up reasons that we will discuss later. But basically his whole theory is that there's a huge conspiracy to keep aliens secret from the public for very selfish reasons that profit these already very powerful individuals. So that's why it's terrifying to talk about because if this is true, like I keep saying, these people have so much power to keep this stuff private that I can't even fathom it. So yeah. <laughs> So like I said, this guy has a lot of proof, and even after watching this video, if you don't completely agree with everything that he says, you do have to ask yourself, like, okay, so there is a lot of proof, at least, that the government is aware that UFOs and aliens exist. So you have to ask yourself, why are they hiding it then? 5% of the US population apparently has seen a UFO or has seen an alien. So it's like when so many people are saying that or reporting that they're seeing this stuff but the government won't acknowledge it, once again it's like why? Why aren't you acknowledging it? That's like kind of what piqued my interest because the Stephen Green has a lot of very far-fetched theories um, but it does make sense when you break it down. So I've kind of divided this conspiracy theory video into different parts that I'm going to talk about because there's so much going on with this conspiracy that I would just get confused if I tried to talk off the top of my head. First thing I'm going to talk about is the actual proof that aliens exist out there. So if you're a non-believer, I'm going to try to convince you that aliens exist. And I'm going to try to convince you that the government is aware that aliens exist. Before I get into that, I'm going to try... What one do I want to try next? Um, I guess I'll try this one because it's not even a donut. It's a brownie, a chocolate peanut butter brownie. So they make like different kind of pastries obviously too. You can see it's a brownie on the bottom. Um, and I was just very intrigued by this one, obviously chocolate peanut butter brownie, brownie covered in chocolate, so. Holy <laughs> That is so good. It reminds me so much of a cosmic brownie. Like it has that same texture to it. And then the peanut butter cream on top and the hard chocolate on the outside. It's just like a 10 out of 10, I would say. That's bomb. So I guess first on the screen I will just pop up some various photos of alien sightings while I'm talking just to kind of corroborate my claims and show you guys the actual photographic evidence that aliens are really out there. So firstly, Stephen Green has a full website that you can visit which I will put in the description. And he also has a YouTube playlist from Serious Disclosure which contains 61 recorded testimonials by a wide variety of military and government witnesses with direct knowledge of or experience with non-terrestrial technology and beings. So there's 61 interviews where high-ranking officials and 
government personnel admit to the fact that UFOs exist, so that's your number one damning piece of evidence. Furthermore, on Wikipedia, if you just do a simple search of alien sightings, there are hundreds documented on Wikipedia that you can literally just scroll down. It's organized by date. There's no way if thousands of people have witnessed a flying saucer in the sky that flying saucers don't exist. Like, there's just no way. Then there's also this alien, thought to be alien body or remains that was discovered called the Atacama skeleton. I feel like I'm mispronouncing that. But basically, it's a skeleton that was found that literally, if you look at it, it resembles exactly what aliens are reported to look like. Like the big head, the big eyes, the smaller bodies. So the remains are only six inches tall. Um, I guess it was six to eight years old when it died. And from all the accounts of people who have witnessed aliens, at least that I came across, aliens are usually very tiny, apparently. Apparently they're like three to four feet tall. So essentially it would make sense that a six-year-old a six-year-old skeleton was only six inches tall. Um, I'll obviously put a picture on the screen of what this skeleton looks like. So this is a cronut. They call it a docent at Legendary Donuts, but I know you guys are all familiar with the word cronut from Nick's videos, so I'm just gonna call it a cronut. And it, once again, I think everything I've had so far is chocolate peanut butter. I swear I will, I will go through other flavors in a second, but this is their chocolate peanut butter cronut. So it has the same peanut butter cream, on top with chocolate. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. so good. I've already had one of their cronuts because I've had them these donuts before on a cheat day previously, so I already knew that the cronut was good. But it's even better when you put chocolate and peanut butter on it. So yeah, basically these two doctors from Stanford who have tried to study this skeleton. The doctor's names are Dr. Gary Nolan and he's a professor in the Department of Microbiology and Immunology at Stanford University. In consultation with him was Dr. Ralph Lockman, who was also of Stanford University. And I guess Dr. Ralph Lockman is very well versed in dwarfism. I guess he studies dwarfism specifically. So they obviously tested this six inch skeleton for dwarfism because if it's six inches tall and eight years old, six to eight years old, obviously you would think it would be a dwarf or something. I guess when they tested its DNA, none of the proteins that signal dwarfism, I'm not exactly sure how they tested it, but there was no proteins or something like that that led them to believe that this was a dwarf. What kind of six-year-old human baby would live to be six years old when it's only six inches tall? Like, that just does not happen. Also, I'm sorry if um, you can hear dogs barking right now. I'm not even gonna try to stop talking while they're barking because I've come to realize from living here, I've only been here for like a week and they just bark and bark and bark and bark and they don't stop barking. So it would be fruitless to try to stop talking and wait for them. So for an example of some of the stories that are on the recorded playlist of witness documentation, I guess you could say, that Stephen Green has uploaded to YouTube. There is a story from the Maelstrom Air Force Base in Montana. This captain named Captain Robert Salas has reported that the people at his base had contacted him one night because they had witnessed these glowing lights in the sky and apparently these lights were flying around the base. And so obviously they were concerned and they called their captain and he was like, you know, like, what What could you possibly be seeing? Just call me back if anything happens or if anything serious happens. And so they call back again a couple hours later 
and he says that this time he can tell that they are pretty terrified just by their voices and he says that the voice on the phone whoever was talking to him reported to him that now there was a large glowing red light so at first it was a couple of lights just like flying around and then this large glowing red light was just hanging out just outside their base and i guess as he was telling him this on the phone all of the base's missiles started shutting down which freaks me out to no end because i guess apparently these missiles weren't connected so there's no way that something that went wrong with one missile would have made the other missiles shut down and stop working like there's nothing that could have created that happening. And the Air Force made an extensive investigation to this, I guess you could say, and they couldn't figure out what happened. Like, there is nothing that could tell them why their missile shut down. So there was these mysterious lights flying around and then all of a sudden all the missiles shut off. Hmm, I don't know. It sounds like some sort of aliens doing something. So furthermore, I guess both Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan, two former US presidents, have had their own alien sightings. Jimmy Carter, who was president from 1977 to 1981, reported seeing an unidentified flying object while at Leary, Georgia in 1969. And then Ronald Reagan, who was the 40th president of the United States, supposedly saw a UFO on at least two occasions. So next I'm gonna go with a different flavor besides peanut butter and chocolate, which I swear I wasn't even trying to just pick out those just off the bat. Like I wasn't thinking about peanut butter chocolate, but those are the ones that looked best to me. Um, but next I'm gonna try this one, which I think is raspberry cheesecake if I remember correctly. And I'm pretty sure this one is filled. Okay, these donuts are huge, so I have not hit the filling yet. Wait. I feel like this might be PB&J, just because I think... Yeah, so this is peanut butter and chocolate, and this PB on top tastes exactly like that PB. And then it's raspberry jam in the middle. which is divine. Hmm. That's really good. I love raspberry jam so much. It's just like, I think it's the best jam that you can get flavor wise. And obviously mixed with peanut butter, like, you can't go wrong. And then I guess kind of adding on to proof that aliens overall exist, I'm going to try to prove that the government agencies are also aware that these aliens exist. So it's not just civilians who are having these sightings, it's also the government who is well aware of this. So I have two documents here that I'm going to read off that are on my phone, you can see here, um, that essentially prove that the government is well aware of aliens existence. So first I have a letter from Walter B. Smith who was the United States Director of Central Intelligence from 1950 to 1953. The subject of his letter, I guess, I don't know if you would even call this memo or something, literally says, subject, flying saucers. <laughs> and then he says, I am today transmitting to the National Security Council a proposal in which it is concluded that the problems connected with the unidentified flying objects appear to have implications for psychological warfare as well as for intelligence and operations. So there you have it. There is an official document from the CIA 
that acknowledges the existence of flying saucers. On Stephen Green's website, by the way, there's a ton of these documents. I Like I said, I'll link it in the description, but I'm just reading off a couple of them. Um, so I know you guys are all probably familiar with Roswell. If you're not, it happened in the summer of 1947 where a rancher discovered unidentifiable debris in his sheep pasture outside of Roswell, New Mexico. Officials from the local Air Force base asserted originally that it was a crash weather balloon, but many people believed that it was the remains of an extraterrestrial flying saucer. So the letter says, there's a lot of it that's blocked out. Obviously you can see I'm putting it on the screen right now. Um, so th there's a lot that's been blocked out, but basically it says, blank headquarters of the 8th Air Force telephonically advised this office that an object purporting to be a flying disc was recovered near Roswell, New Mexico. The disc is hexagonal in shape and was suspended from a balloon by cable. That's where the whole air balloon thing came in, where the Air Force tried to convince everyone that it was actually an air balloon that <laughs> crashed in this pasture, even though if it was an air balloon, I'm sure the farmer would have been able to recognize that. And then it says, disc and balloon are being transported to Wright Field by special plane for examination. Obviously, it was confusing enough to the Air Force. They confiscated the crashed whatever it was and moved it to right field in order to study it. And my favorite part about this is that nearly 50 years after Roswell happened, the United States Air Force finally spoke out about what this crash was actually supposed to be, and they claimed that it was part of a top secret atomic espionage project called Project Mogul. But if they were aware of what was going on, the US military was supposedly aware of what was going on, why did they need to transport the craft to try to study it? And then the last little piece of information that I will share to prove that the government is well aware that aliens exist is that in 1952 a project called Project Blue Book was launched by the United States Air Force and they supposedly launched this project in order to like quell civilian fears about UFOs and kind of make civilians aware that they are doing everything possible to study them. And this professor named Dr. Hynek, who was a professor of astronomy at Ohio State University, I believe, he was chosen to head this operation. And he has later come out, there's a recording of him admitting that Project Blue Book wasn't there to study UFO cases. What they really did was take UFO cases that were easily uh, I guess easily explained like it w it was obvious that this person saw a plane and they thought it was a saucer so they would take these cases that were easily explainable and push them to the media and push them out to the world and make sure everyone knew like okay all these cases where these people supposedly saw flying saucers like it didn't actually happen and then the cases that were unexplainable they would sweep under the rug so the doctor who was literally the head of this operation has come out later and said that his job wasn't at all to actually study UFOs his job was to sweep things under the rug essentially um, so anyways, I think this is, I thought this was a, the cheesecake one, but this is actually PB&J. And then I think this is the blueberry cheesecake one that I ordered. I think you can kind of see like this is darker than this. So yeah, that has to be peanut butter. I know I sound crazy because it's like, well, you can obviously taste it, but I swear or I ordered raspberry cheesecake. <laughs> So that's why I'm like so stuck on that. But what I think happened is that I actually ordered blueberry cheesecake and then I thought it was raspberry cheesecake. And last but not least, this last fact I will leave you guys with before I start on to the next part of this conspiracy to even further prove, I guess, the existence of aliens if you're not a believer yet. Um, Stephen Green says that he has discovered over 3,500 cases where extraterrestrial craft have landed and left a trace, and then he has found over 4,000 cases where they have been traced on radar, so like radar by other planes or something, so that's a lot of cases and evidence that he has that prove his claims. Mm -mm. 
So now you're probably asking yourself, okay, well, who is this Stephen Green guy? What are his credentials? He's probably some crazy kook who wants attention and blah 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 bloop. I know some of you guys are saying that. And I'm here to tell you guys what the f*** is up. No, I'm just kidding. Um, before I tell you guys what the f*** is up, I'm going to try the Raspberry Pull Up Rub. That's exactly what it's called. I remember exactly because when I first saw that at Legendary Donuts, I was excited because that just sounds good. Yeah. Weirdly enough, like sometimes in the donut world, simple is better. Sometimes when you have like a crazy donut, you think it's going to be way better than it is. And then it's just not that good. And then you have like these simple glazed raspberry ones and they're just like bomb. Apparently Stephen Green's interest in UFOs stems from his childhood. I guess he was playing with his friends like in the neighborhood, I guess, where he grew up one day. And he and all his friends saw a flying saucer. And so I guess that's like, kind of what started his interest in them. Um, just because it, to him it just confirmed that they were real. And so aside from that, he's also a trauma doctor. He is a doctor. His name is Dr. Stephen Green. So being a doctor doesn't mean anything technically but it also like to me does signal that he is an esteemed member of society he's not you know some random person who is looking for money or whatever out of this especially a trauma doctor I don't know I just don't I don't think of a doctor as sitting around making up the fact that UFOs exist being a doctor himself he said that there is more proof that UFOs exist than there is proof that the medicines we take help our bodies or like actually will cure us so that's how certain he is that ufos are a real thing and that's how certain he is in his theory so i guess what originally started him down this rabbit hole into realizing that our government is crazy crazy corrupt <laughs> um so it technically started in the early 1990s because that's when he first founded the Center for Intelligence for Extraterrestrial Beings or something like that i have it on my phone let me just let me just find out it's called the Center for Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence, and he founded that in 1990. So the whole reason for him founding that is because he basically wanted to show aliens or communicate with aliens and show them that we weren't hostile towards them. And he wanted to be able to communicate with them in a non-militarized way because he didn't see any world governments doing this. And so he was like, well, Someone's got to do it. Like aliens, they exist out there. They know we're here. Someone should communicate with him. So that's what he originally had tried doing. And so he kind of became like this UFO expert, I guess you could say. Uh, so next I'm going to try this. They actually call this one the Oprah, weirdly enough. And it's maple bacon, which I haven't had a maple bacon donut. I don't know if I've ever had one in my life. We're going to try it today and see how it is. The bacon smells very bacony. I'm not gonna lie, it's a combination that I've like never really understood before. But I can kind of see the appeal now. Like, I think I still would prefer just like a normal maple bar, but it makes sense, like, I would put maple syrup on my bacon and stuff like that, so. It's not bad. So, like I said, Stephen Green kind of became, like, this UFO expert. And he was a trauma doctor at the time when, so this was the early 1990s again. And I guess James Wolsey, who was the CIA director under Bill Clinton at the beginning of Bill Clinton's presidency. And he literally contacted Dr. Green to be briefed about UFOs. And at first, Dr. Green literally thought that the CIA director was kind of just picking his brain to figure out what he knew because he assumed that the director would know everything, you know? But I guess it became very evident that the CIA director did not know anything about UFOs. 
and wasn't being briefed by anyone about UFOs. It doesn't really matter what level of power you're supposed to have in government. Like, we are under the impression as United States citizens that the president is the commander in chief. He is kind of like our head of state. He is the single executive power. I mean, it kind of shattered Stephen Green's world apparently when he realized that the CIA director and the president, Bill Clinton, weren't being briefed about this stuff because he's like, so then who the hell knows about it? The president is kind of like a temporary employee, right? He max has eight years in office. In the eyes of these people who are running these schemes, and hiding this information from the public, the president, he's gonna be out of here in eight years. And so basically, it took a while for Stephen Green to figure this out though, because at first he, th he told the CIA director that, okay, if this is such a big deal to you, then why don't you just have Bill Clinton use his power of the executive order, which basically will surpass Congress, to get this information out and to demand this information be released. This is where it got kind of scary for me, not gonna lie, like, it freaks me out. If this is true, I'm just speechless. I already knew that government was corrupt. Like I <laughs> majored in poli-sci. I have sat through many lectures where professors have ranted and, and raved about the corruptions in politics and all that kind of stuff. So I already knew that. But this corruption, like this type of corruption is just way bigger than I think anyone could have ever imagined. So this is where it starts to scare me. <laughs> Stephen Green, like I said, is like, well, why isn't Bill Clinton just use the executive order? And he's told that they don't want Bill Clinton to do that because they don't think they could protect him and that he would turn out to be another Kennedy. And that just blew my mind because it has been documented, well documented, that Kennedy did believe in UFOs and did believe in their existence and was trying to get more information about them. Could that be why he was killed? I mean, there's already been conspiracies surrounding his assassination, like, and so the next question you're probably asking is, well, can the United States even do this? Like, how is it possible that they could keep such a huge secret secret? And if you look at the NSA, for example, it's jokingly referred to as no such agency because it was kept secret for so long. Workers who worked on the Manhattan Bomb Project developing the atom bomb were literally told that if they gave away any secrets that they knew, they would either be fined the equivalent of $100,000 or face 10 years in prison. So yes, the United States is more than capable than keeping a secret. And I honestly feel like the greatest arsenal they have is that everyone's like, there's no way they could do that. And so everyone kind of assumes that there's no way this secret could be kept. So before I get too ahead of myself on that, because I have a lot to say about how it is possible that the United States has kept this secret, I'm going to try the unicorn donut, which I have no idea what the flavor is because it's a unicorn donut, but it looks like it has a huge dollop of whipped cream on top and it smells very sweet. Mmm, that frosting's good. What is that? It kind of reminds me of a Cool Whip. That's really good. It tastes like a regular glazed donut with Cool Whip on it. but it looks a lot prettier. So Richard C. Doty, who was a retired special agent of the US Air Force, said that they had snitches in news stations. Basically the Air Force had snitches in all the major news stations who the Air Force was literally paying to be there. There's also been a CIA document that has been released that literally says, and I quote, in many instances, we have persuaded reporters to either postpone, change, hold, or even scrap stories that could have adversely affected national security interests or jeopardized sources and methods. So the CIA is admitting that they have intentionally forced reporters and news stations to withhold stories. How is this okay? So on top of that, um, this committee called the High Committee 
also found that at one time there was 42 different individuals who were on the CIA payroll who had been implanted in news stations specifically for the purpose of basically being spies within the news media. So it's really, really not that far-fetched to believe that the CIA could be withholding information from the public and using the media and the news media to help withhold information from the public. Especially when you look at the fact that literally in 2019, 90% of the news is owned by five corporations. So not only does Stephen Green believe that the military uses the news to withhold information from the United States public, he also believes that the United States military has a campaign going on specifically dedicated to destroying the credibility of eyewitnesses. So basically just making anyone who has seen a UFO seem crazy. I totally believe that the military would use our news and our reporters to basically meet their agenda and do anything they can to meet their agenda. So this one is birthday cake on top and then it's the only cake donut I got so it's like a full on, I usually don't like cake donuts so I didn't get many of those, um, but I think it's like chocolate frosted with cake batter, something like that on top, birthday cake something. Oh my, that's so rich. Holy crap. <laughs> that's part of the reason why I can't do cake donuts because they're like so heavy. The next part of my conspiracy video is going to be talking about why the United States military would want to do this. Like what are their motives for keeping aliens secret from us? And Dr. Green believes that the reason why they want to keep the alien secret from us is solely because of the military industrial complex and the amount of money that the United States makes by waging war. According to Stephen Green, the people who are running our country are companies like Lockheed and Skunk Works. They are responsible for building the infamous U-2 spy plane. So obviously they're deeply entrenched in the military industrial complex. So he believes that people like Ben Rich and Kelly Johnson, who have been the directors of this company, are really the people who are in control of all this stuff behind the scenes. So they have a ton of money and power. They haven't been elected and they are using the Pentagon's budget and our tax dollars to, he thinks that these companies have already successfully reverse engineered alien spacecraft. So they've taken craft that have crashed in the United States or wherever else, studied it and have been able to replicate the technology that the alien spacecraft use. Okay, so my camera stopped recording, but as I was saying, these companies have successfully copied the technology that aliens use to fly their spacecraft, and the way that they've been able to do this is through covert black operations that still use American tax dollars, but just don't go through Congress or have any congressional oversight or obviously any public scrutiny either because the public doesn't know about them. So it's estimated that these black projects or these covert operations literally cost $200 billion a year. And I know that sounds crazy, but the Pentagon's own auditors even admitted in 2003 that they couldn't account for more than 25% of the Pentagon's budget. We're not getting any of it in return because they've figured out this technology, but I don't see it benefiting any of us. That's Stephen Green's main issue is that he wants this information to be released because of the amount of people it could help. Before I get into that, I'm going to taste this. I think this is what? What kind of cereal is this? It's Fruity Pebbles, maybe. I think so. Mmm. That's good. There's a very, very strong Fruity Pebbles flavor on top. I usually get worried with donuts like this that the flavor will just be lost, but I can taste it really well. 
Mm -mm. So basically these covert operations take place at bases like Area 51, and they've supposedly successfully created alien spacecraft from scratch that is identical to the spacecraft that we have recovered. Um, so obviously we're a lot more technologically advanced than we're being led to believe. I guess that the technology is so hard to wrap your mind around because it's literally alien technology, like it's nothing you would have ever seen on Earth before, but Richard Doty, who I previously mentioned in this video, he is the uh, retired special agent for the U.S. Air Force. He said the military found what they thought to be a piece of plexiglass in the spacecraft, and it actually ended up being what powered the spacecraft. So it's really confusing. I'm not going to try to explain it, but basically this, the alien spacecrafts are gravity propulsion systems. So they <laughs> manipulate gravity to propel themselves forward, and then they are powered by space-time energy. So apparently space-time isn't just like static energy. It was compared to, so if you think about static energy being like a static lake, space-time would be like a waterfall. So I guess there's a ton of energy in it, and somehow they have figured out how to capture that energy and then use it to power everything. So it's essentially a free energy system. And if you think about the implications that a free energy system would have on our society, it's fucking immense. We wouldn't rely on fossil fuels at all anymore. And that's essentially one of the main reasons why these high up people don't want us to have access to this technology because it's like, think about Lockheed's and Skunk Works. They make their money off of militarization and the money that we're able to make for the wars in the Middle East over oil. So no, they obviously don't want civilians to be non-reliant on their energy systems. If you can imagine if every single household was able to power their car, their home, everything essentially for free, like big corporations wouldn't be making any money. And so that's the reason why they want to keep it under wraps. Huh. <laughs> Okay, so my camera stopped recording and I kind of forgot what I was saying because I had to wait a second to charge it. Um, but basically I think what I was saying is that the people who have seen alien technology reproduced or seen it in action, I guess you could say, it's like unbelievable to them. And the craziest part about it is that we've actually had similar technology for years. Like it's not even something that we've recently discovered. It's like this secret has been going on since the 50s. So I finally just tried their cinnamon roll, which uh, <laughs> I only tried the center because the outside of it looks kind of dry. But the center is good with the frosting. It's like a cream cheese frosting. So like I said, this secret has been going on for a long time. And I mentioned Ben Rich before. He was the head of the Lockheed and Skunk Works operation or company. And he said, quote, we have insane things flying in the Nevada desert that are 50 years beyond what you can comprehend. If you've seen it on Star Wars, Star Trek, we've been there, done that, or decided that it wasn't worth the effort. So if he's saying that the technology they've developed is beyond our comprehension, I can't even, I can't even imagine what the technology is like now. So the moral of the story is that we should literally be like a hundred years more advanced technologically than we are actually today. And the military is basically intentionally suppressing this knowledge and keeping it out of the public eye. I think that in, tw in the 2010 fiscal year, there was over 5,000 patents, AKA inventions that were seized, literally seized and confiscated under the claim of national security. So there's this one story of this guy, his name is Stan Meyer, and he created a car that can run on water. Um, within a couple days of him inventing this, it was on news stories and everything like that. Within a couple days, the, the government came in and, and seized the f*** out of that car. It's like the exact same concept as the theory that the pharmaceutical industry actually has a cure for cancer, but they won't release it because the amount of money they make off medicine and the amount of money they get for cancer research and stuff like that. Probably the last bite of the unicorn donut. Oh. 
I just like live for the Cool Whip on top. So good. So anyways, I've been talking for such a long time. I know. Um, but to end off this conspiracy, first off, I have to say that there's been no evidence at all that aliens are hostile toward us. It's more likely that they are concerned with our hostility toward them because alien activity around the globe, like it's alien sightings have been going on for centuries, but alien activity around the globe really sparked around the time that we, the United States, set off the atom bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and that was in World War II and if you look at even just on the Wikipedia site if you scroll down through alien sightings you'll see yourself that after 1947 there's a huge jump like before that it'd be like every 20 years every 30 years and then in 1947 1948 1949 1950 there's multiple sightings each year and so it's commonly thought that they must have sensed our nuclear weapons somehow in space. We don't know if it affected their universe somehow or if they were just able to sense it and kind of wanted to check out what's going on. But that's when aliens really started to visit Earth a lot more frequently. Mmm, I love this. And so, like I said, there's no evidence that they're hostile towards us, but what Stephen Green thinks that the United States will do eventually is they're not going to admit, obviously, that they've been hiding this for all these years. What he thinks that they'll do is stage a fake alien attack with the UFOs that they have reverse engineered, so the UFOs that are ours but look exactly like the ones from space. And they will, it's called a false flag operation. It happened in the Gulf of Tonkin in the Vietnam War, where the United States staged an attack on their ships in order to expand the Vietnam War. And it happened more recently with Saddam Hussein and the weapons of mass destruction that were apparently in the Middle East, even though there was no evidence that there was any weapons of mass destruction at all. It's happened multiple times in our history where we've where our government has lied to us in order to all unite us against a common enemy that isn't really our enemy. And so that's what Stephen Green thinks is going to happen with UFOs. Mm. <laughs> so for my last bite, I think I'll take a bite of... Uh... I think I'd like another bite of this. And so basically what Dr. Green thinks will happen is that the government is planning a fake alien invasion to kind of unite us against this attacker. Even though they know that there's no way we could ever survive a war with aliens, like if they have this crazy technology that we need to copy to be on their level, like they could obliterate us in seconds if they wanted to. Mm. So... The government knows this, but it's going to stage a fake alien invasion to unite everyone together. Basically a win-win situation for them because it will give them a reason to militarize further, which we already spent so much money on the military and defense that it's ridiculous, but apparently we need to spend more and so it gives us an excuse to up our defense spending and give more money to people and corporations who profit from war. And it'll basically give the military a cover for their black operations because then they can say, well, we need to do this because look what happened. The aliens attacked us. And the craziest part about this last little point is that Dr. Green thinks that things like cattle mutilations, which I've done a previous video on, which is why it's so crazy to me. He thinks that the government is staging cattle mutilations and things like that to kind of warm us up to the idea as a society that aliens are evil. And so they have these paramilitary operations, apparently, according to Dr. Green, where they stage things like cattle mutilations, which could have no other, obviously no other explanation aside from aliens. And so if one day the United States government claims that we've been attacked by flying saucers, 
So yeah, that is basically the whole conspiracy, which I know it's mind-blowing, I know it's terrifying, and I'm full off donuts and I'm done talking, so that's gonna be the end of this video. But I hope you guys enjoyed and feel free to debate in the comments all you want. I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to think because I know this conspiracy theory blew my mind and I still don't know like if I can fully believe it or not. But let me know what you guys think and yeah, I will just see you in my next video.